Have a look at these shots. The only thing I did was adding some contrast. I didn't change anything else. I think it became rather clear that contrast is easily one of the most important aspects in color grading. The issue is, in Final Cut Pro we don't have a good tool to achieve good looking contrast quickly and easily. Let's have a look at the tools at our disposal. Final Cut Pro offers contrast adjustments in only two ways. So the first way is that we go into the color inspector and we take a color adjustments corrector. In here you can find a contrast slider. The other way we can achieve some contrast is by using an instance of color curves. So I can pull up an instance of color curves, go into the luma curve and here we can change the contrast however we like. But before we can compare different approaches for contrast we should understand what contrast actually is. You can think of contrast as two people on a seesaw but we are in color grading so we don't deal with two people on a seesaw we imagine that there is black and white on a seesaw. Now, if we increase the contrast, bright things get brighter and dark things get darker. If we decrease the contrast, dark things get brighter and bright things get darker. So far, so good. However, every seesaw needs an anchor point, so we can call this the pivot, where the seesaw will pivot around, basically. So if we have the pivot right in the middle here, the contrast will do something like this. And if we have the pivot right here to the right hand side, the contrast will pivot around this point because you can imagine this as a seesaw that pivots around this point and it would look something like this. Another way to achieve contrast is by using a so-called S-curve. This curve shape means you also make the bright things brighter and the dark things darker, but not in a linear fashion. You do this non-linearly, meaning really dark things get a lot more darker than just moderately dark things. And really bright things get a lot more brighter than moderately bright things. The key point to understand here is that this S-curve also has a pivot, probably somewhere around here. And the pivot in the curve is where the image doesn't move. We don't want to affect the exposure of our scene, so therefore having the pivot around middle grey is usually a good idea. But we can go into more detail in a dedicated video for that. We can visualize the contrast adjustment just with a black and white gradient. Let's start with the S-curve. So for example, I put my pivot point right here, because for example, let's say this is where my middle grey point is at. Then I can increase the highlights and decrease the shadows in brightness. And here we go, we have now a nice subtle contrast curve. And you can see the S shape of this curve is represented in the traces in the Luma waveform here as well. The approach using the S curve is usually the preferred method of increasing contrast because the S curve gives you just a very nice and natural contrast roll off towards the highlights and the shadows and it's perceived as the most filmic and most natural way of dealing with contrast. So now let's get rid of our color curves and now we will use the color adjustments filter and in here we will also increase the contrast. But you can see the contrast scales rather linearly, I mean the curve gets a little bit bent over here. But also we can see that we clip our highlights above 100 and I mean there goes nothing beyond zero but we can definitely don't make out a very good distinction between these two patches here and also we lose like three of our stops in the very brightest area. So let's get rid of my drawings and then let's decrease the contrast one more time and let's use it slowly so we can actually see what's going on and you can see the first step here moves above 100 now the second and everybody kind of gets squished at around 110 IRE because this is just where things cap out. So the contrast slider in Final Cut Pro seems a bit more inferior compared to the S-curve approach. Now let's get rid of these adjustments and have a look at a real world example. Let's use this clip. You can see I only have a LUT on here which goes from Blackmagic Design Film Generation 4 to Rec. 709. This is how the image looks without the LUT, this is how the image looks with the LUT, this is just a plain color space transformation LUT. Before that I have a minor exposure adjustment because the image was a little bit too bright overall. Remember in Final Cut Pro the signal flows from top to bottom, meaning the input is at the top, the output is at the bottom. This means the exposure adjustment gets processed first and the custom LUT effect, so our color space transformation, gets processed last. First, let's have a look at the color adjustments filter. So I go into my color inspector and choose a new instance of color adjustments. 
Now I go in here and just increase the contrast. And you can see we clip the highlights. This is because we're working after the LUT. We don't want that. We want to push that before the LUT so the LUT can do the heavy lifting for us. And this is how things look now. Okay, let's reset this and dial this in one more time. So I just increase the contrast until the image or the bulk of the image rather looks good to me. And I think we should go a little bit heavy handed here. And yeah, that looks that looks about right. So about 90-ish would be where I park it. But as you can see in the image and also in the waveform, I mean, we almost clipped the entire sky. Everything is squished against 100 here and the overall contrast response doesn't seem so very natural. Okay, let's get rid of my drawings and then I will go to clip, audition and select duplicate as audition. Now I get rid of the color adjustments effect. So I place the instance of color curves into my signal chain and move it before the LUT. So let's call this curves. Uh, contrast. Now I go into my Luma curve. I will eyeball around like 40-ish percent right here. This is where Blackmagic um, Film Generation 4 should be with its middle gray value and we want to preserve exposure. So this is why I dropped this point here because if we shift that around we will change the exposure of the image and we don't want that. So I will anchor this here and now we make the bright things a bit brighter and we try to achieve a nice highlight roll of something like this. Should massage the midtones just a bit more. Something like that. Doesn't look too bad. Let's have a look at the before and after. So this is before, this is after. I think we now should have a very similar contrast level to our first attempt using the color adjustments. Yeah, and I think that does the job. Now let's compare these two versions. Since I used auditions, we can select the clip and I can press Y on my keyboard. And now we have the two versions here. So this is the version using color curves and this is the version using the contrast adjustment. Again, this is the version using color curves and this is the version using the contrast adjustment. And as you can see, the version with the contrast adjustment is a lot more saturated. Have a look. This is the contrast adjustment and this is the curves adjustment. Contrast adjustment, curves adjustment. And also the curves adjustment is a bit darker, but this is just due to the different ways we handled contrast and I'm just a little bit too lazy to match it here. But still, we can see that our curves adjustment preserves the sky a lot better and that our contrast adjustment just annihilates the brightest parts in the sky. So in an ideal world, there would be some solution in between, something that preserves the saturation, but also protects the highlights. And also, I have a confession to make. I work full time in color for like five years now and never ever have I achieved good looking contrast by just using curves. When I'm doing LUT or look development in DaVinci Resolve, I almost always use a third party tool for my contrast adjustments. So yeah, if you don't want to monkey around with the curves, <laughs> I really don't blame you. And this is where my contrast plugin enters the stage. Let's have a look. I will go to my curves adjustments and I will duplicate this one more time. And now we can click done here and I get rid of my curves adjustment. Then I go into my effects and use my contrast plugin. Also, let's make sure that we put it before the LUT. And here you can see we have the two controls we discussed earlier. Contrast, which just increases or decreases contrast, and pivot that lets us decide where the contrast pivots around. Before we test it on the shot, let's go back to the black and white gradient one more time so we all understand what the contrast plugin is actually doing. On the black and white gradient, I will apply the contrast plugin so we can play around with it. If I increase the contrast, you can see that the resulting shape is a very nice S-curve and we also preserve a lot of steps in the very dark parts of the image and we also preserve our steps in the bright parts of the image. And I can crank the contrast as much as I want. I mean, we do lose one step in the shadows, but everything in the highlights seems to scale rather nicely. We can also decrease the contrast, of course, and you can see that this behaves in a more linear kind of way. This is just one of my personal preferences. When I decrease contrast, I much rather have this behave in a linear kind of way. And if I increase contrast, I much rather have this S-curve trace. Okay, let's increase the contrast again. And now let's have a look at the pivot. By default, the pivot is set to 40, which corresponds to 40 IRE on the waveform. So if we imagine a line here at 40, wait, actually I can use this line and drag it to 40. And if I increase the contrast around that, you can see that we pivot around 40 IRE. And if I increase the contrast now, you can see that we now pivot around 75. So I will use this line here, set this to 75, and you can see how the curve scales rather nicely. Let's reset everything. 
My intention with this plugin is to give you a nice general purpose contrast curve so you can just not think about anything and breeze through your edit. The pivot being set to 40 by default corresponds to most log profiles. So for example, I shoot an S-Log3 and my middle gray value is at around 42% or 42 IRE on the waveform. That means if we want to preserve our exposure, what we usually want to do, we should pivot around that value just to preserve our exposure and everything should scale nicely. But no worries, you can use this creatively as well. So if we want to shift the exposure, then we can change the pivot, of course. Now let me show you how quickly and how easily you can make something look great. First, let's have a look at the shot we've been working on. So with my contrast plugin right here after my exposure adjustment and before the LUT, I don't mess with anything else. I just increase the contrast to my liking and I think, Wow, the image looks amazing somewhere around here. Let's set this to, what is it, 65? Okay, let's set this to 65. And this is just amazing. So let's have a look. This is before and this is after. Look how much this shot slaps now. If we go back to our edition, we can press Y and compare the versions. So this is the version using the color adjustments. This is the version using the curves. And this is the version using my contrast adjustment. Again, color adjustments. Contrast plugin, curves, contrast plugin, color adjustments, contrast plugin. Yeah, I do think the winner is clear here. Okay, let's move on to a couple of other shots. This shot comes from an Arri camera. So we have our color space transformation from Arri Log C3, Arri White Gamut to Rec 709. And the only thing we do with this shot is just increasing the contrast. I don't want to monkey around with anything else. I think something like this, <laughs> you can see how quickly and easily something becomes much more pleasant. So this before, this is after, before, after. And I think this general purpose curve works so nicely on a different variety of shots. Let's move on to the next shot of this little guy playing with his rocket in the sunset. Again, I have my contrast adjustment just before my LUT. And I will just increase the contrast to something like... This, and this might be one of these situations where I want to use the pivot creatively just to get this into the right direction. And I will increase the pivot to like 55-ish, somewhere around that. And now I would just try to sell this sunset vibe. Okay, so this before, this is after. I think this looks much more like a sunset silhouette now. Of course, there is a lot more that could be done to this shot, but this video is about this contrast plugin. And I think with just the strokes on two sliders, everything works out nicely. Let's have a look at a shot where we probably need to do something different. So on this shot here, you can see that the entire scene is exposed rather dimly. And if we would pivot around 40, you can see here that almost nothing of the image sits around 40. So there is nothing really that would get brighter. I can show you this. So if we increase the contrast with the pivot set to 40, you can see just how everything gets darker. Of course, these specular highlights here in the glass, those reflections from the light, they become brighter as, as you can see in the waveform as well. So if I disable my contrast adjustment, you can see they do indeed move. However, this doesn't make sense for the image. So let's figure out the pivot for this scene. I think the meat of the image lives around like 25-ish, 30-ish IRE. So let's decrease the pivot to 27. Yeah, I think 27 is a good number. Let's set this to 27. And now I will just increase the contrast. And just like that, you can see how everything scales rather nicely. So I think I will increase the contrast to just something like this. I might increase the pivot as well to 30 because I do feel the image gets a little bit too bright overall. And that would be it. So let's have a look before, after, before, after. Yeah. And this is such a small contrast adjustment, yet it makes a huge difference. Let's have a look at it in full screen. So this is the image that we started with. And this is the image with just this minor contrast adjustment. Last but not least, let's have a look at another shot of this plane. So I'll go into my clip. I have an exposure adjustment and my LUT and the contrast sandwiched in between. And I don't think we don't need to monkey around with the pivot here. Let's just increase the contrast and see where things go. Yeah, I think we're getting a little bit too bright. So let's increase the pivot here. And just with a stroke of two sliders, this is before and this is after. I think this speaks for itself. The link to my contrast plugin is in the video description. And if you're interested in more plugins that make the impossible possible in Final Cut Pro, make sure you're subscribed because there is a lot to come.